We got an update on a potential new project over at FromSoft, as well as some big changes to Xbox Game Pass, a cancelled Riot title, and the closure of a veteran game studio. So a ton to go over, and by the way, hi, I'm Dennis, standing in for Jordan, who is currently out of office. But don't worry, I will still be going over all the big gaming news as usual, so let's go. Now one thing I definitely didn't expect to hear about this week is the upcoming Bioshock game that's in development at Cloud Chamber Studios. While the project was announced in 2019, we've heard next to nothing other than the fact that it is in development. And that development seems to be ramping up as Cloud Chamber is currently hiring for over 20 positions including some pretty major ones like lead level designer. Of course we always check these job listings to see if we can learn anything more about the game and there are a couple of interesting mentions. One job listing notes that you'll work in Unreal Engine 5 to implement narrative content so that confirms the team is still working with UE5. More interesting however is the listing for a senior combat designer which notes you'll be tasked with implementing combat gameplay content in an immersive sandbox world. To me immersive sandbox world sounds very similar to an open world and that actually lines up with leaks we had back in 2021 where journalist Colin Moriarty mentioned the game would be open world as well. Which is of course a big departure from the more linear structure of the first three games. He also mentioned the setting would be a fictional Antarctic city called Borealis which sounds like a logical next step from Rapture and Columbia. Like the skies or the bottom of the sea, the cold of the Arctic is the perfect place for a megalomaniac to go and build their society. More things that were confirmed by the job listing is that the game will still employ a first person perspective and should accommodate a high degree of player expression. Which is of course something the Bioshock series has always done with the Blasmid system. So yeah, while it's bits and pieces, we're finally getting a clearer picture of what the next Bioshock game is going to look like. And while Cloud Chamber will continue to be hard at work on their next project, there's unfortunately another studio that won't get that chance. Piranha Bytes, the German game studio behind the Gothic, Risen and Elex series is shutting down. At least that's what a studio insider reported to Polish game website CD Action, saying that the studio ended operations at the end of June. Earlier in the year, the studio reported on their social media channel, stating that they were in a difficult situation but still persevering and looking for the right partner. But it unfortunately seems like that did not work out. Now I do want to clarify that the studio's official channels have not responded to this news yet so there could be some information that we're missing. But with the official channels having been quiet since that announcement earlier in the year, the official website currently being empty and the fact that the studio falls under the Embracer group who haven't exactly been shy when it comes to closing studios, I'm inclined to believe the insiders report. Still a shame though and I hope those affected by the closing of the studio will find a new home. Maybe some of them can be relocated to Alimia Interactive, another Embracer studio who's currently working on a remake of the first Gothic. And there are some bigger studios with potential problems, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video so far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe as we do one of these Sunday news roundups every week. Okay, let's talk about that big studio that might be in some trouble, and that is Hellblade developer Ninja Theory. Industry veteran and Circana executive director Matt Piscatella reported on the game's sales over its release month of May, stating it ranked 37th overall for May 20. 2024 in US full game dollar sales while ranking 21st on Xbox Series. Now the game was of course available day one on Game Pass so sales don't paint the whole picture. But Matt also reported on this noting the game ranked 12th in overall Xbox engagement landing it just below Fallout 76. And for a more niche single player focused game I actually think that's a very reasonable score. But Xbox has set a scary precedent this year with Hi-Fi Rush developer Tango Gameworks being closed after shadow dropping a surprising successful and award-winning game. So you'd say then that these sale numbers aren't looking good for Ninja Theory, but luckily there's some good news too. Windows Central did a piece on the studio in May this year and stated that their sources confirmed that Ninja Theory's next title had already been greenlit. That is on top of their experimental horror title Project Mara, so as far as we know there are actually multiple irons in the fire. So I don't think Ninja Theory is in serious trouble yet, but I would imagine there's some pressure on their shoulders to have their next title do a bit better commercially. And I honestly hope it does. I think we've all had our fill of studios closing for the next couple of years. But there is more happening over at Xbox with some big changes to the way Game Pass is going to work. We'll link to the full FAQ page in the video description but I want to go over the two biggest changes. The first of which is the new Xbox Game Pass standard tier. This tier gives you access to Xbox Live so you can play online multiplayer and almost the full library of Game Pass games. The notable exception here is the fact that standard 
standard tier will not include day one releases. So if you want to play games like Fable or Indiana Jones as they come out, then you either need to buy the games or upgrade to the ultimate tier. Standard tier also does not include cloud gaming, but yeah, the day one titles are definitely the biggest difference between this and ultimate. And that brings me to the next big change, which is the pricing for these tiers. Standard will be replacing Xbox Game Pass console membership and is priced at $15 per month. Ultimate tier membership will receive an increase in price now costing $20 per month and PC Game Pass will also become slightly more expensive at $12 per month. So what it effectively boils down to now is whether you want to pay 5 bucks more in order to play the newest releases day one. And as much as I know everyone hates paying more, I think Game Pass has always offered a ton of value for the money, so even at these increased prices, I still think you're getting your money's worth. And considering this year's Xbox Showcase, there's definitely some incentive to make sure you get to play those amazing titles day one, so I can also see why they're doing it. But yeah, these new prices are already in effect if you're becoming a new member. If you already have a membership, pricings won't change until September, so you still have some time to decide if you want to change your subscription. Again, the full FAQ will be in the video description, so check that out if you still have questions. We also got some updates from FromSoft this week, including some insane results for Shadow of the Earth Tree. Not only is the DLC itself doing incredibly well, it also also gave the base game an insane boost in sales. Games Industry Biz reported the game had seen an increase in sales of 467% in the UK when compared to sales in the previous month. This also shot the game up to the fourth overall most sold game in June, ending only below FC24, GTA 5 and F124. So that's a huge increase, one that's obviously well deserved with how good the DLC is. But Miyazaki did confirm that Shadow of the Earth Tree will be the game's only DLC, so it's likely the last spike in popularity Elden Ring will get. Which might mean it's time for the Armored Core franchise to take the spotlight again, because we did receive a hint this week that there is something cooking there. A job listing for a character modeler notes modeling and texturing characters or robots as your main responsibility. So definitely sounds Armored Core related, but the big question that leaves us with is if they are recruiting for a DLC or for a completely new game. Miyazaki did state to IGN Japan that Armored Core is very important important to From Software and that they have a strong desire to continue making it in the future. So we know the studio wants a sequel, but there is also the possibility of a DLC. One reason to believe so is that most recent FromSoft games, with the exception of Sekiro, have gotten at least one. But there's some evidence as well as reliable FromSoft data miner Zuli the Witch discovered a ton of disabled DLC labeled files in the base game back in September last year. To be honest, both a DLC and a sequel seem likely with the information we currently have it could even be both but the job listing at least shows there's more armored core coming in the future we also learned about something we won't be seeing in the future as a Washington Post article notes that Riot has cancelled an unannounced fighting game the report came from journalist Mikhail Klimentov who notes that the game codenamed Pool Party was to be Riot's attempt at a smash like platform fighter set in the League of Legends universe while internally testing and cancelling prototypes of games is common practice the article notes that the results from Warner's fighting game Multiverses is one of the reasons why Riot decided to can the project. Another potential reason is that the game changed from a hardcore fighting game to something that included party game elements and casual friendly mechanics. And not everyone was on board with this, as Klimentov notes that the change and scope in Vision frustrated some staff on the project. Not sure how this will impact the development of Riot's other fighting game, the 2v2 team-based 2xKO, which is still in development and should release in 2025. One thing that is kind of funny funny though is that in the same week this report came out, Dota 2, another MOBA, dropped an update that included a fighting game mode minigame. Obviously it's much smaller in scope than what Riot was planning, but it's still a funny coincidence. And I want to wrap up with a quick update on last week's video, where we briefly mentioned the second season of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. It was scheduled to release on July 11, but has since been delayed by two weeks, now launching on July 25th. The game could have really used a win, but unfortunately players will have to wait two more weeks for new content. And in general, it's a bit of a quiet week in gaming, although we do have Flintlock The Siege of Dawn releasing on the 18th. So expect a stream on that and a look forward at some of the big titles dropping in August like Black Myth Wukong. And of course, we'll wrap up the week with another one of these Sunday news roundups, so subscribe to not miss it, leave a like on this one if you enjoyed it, and check out the previous Sunday vid by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one, goodbye!